What's going on, you loyal listeners? Thank you for tuning in to the L Squared Podcast. I'm your host here, Luke Larson, and joining me today, as per the usual, is my lovely and loquacious co-host who will be assisting me in leisurely launching you into levity, old legs. Whew, that was a mouthful. I got yeah. it all out there. How we doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I've been, I've been a little under the weather, uh, just uh, kind of recovering for that Oscar fever. <laughs> wow. Fever, I Wow. Had. Hold on, I think we... The fever finally broke, and uh, yeah, we made it. We're here. So, We're here. we made it through Oscar Sunday. Yes, it's, we did. It's the, should we, do we call it the Super Bowl of movie season? Well, I mean, that's normally I would make fun of you for saying that, being as the Oscars is notoriously long and notoriously boring. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, it might have been a touch better than the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> yeah, maybe just a little uh, bit. I mean, I, I enjoyed winning money on the Super Bowl. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll put it out. We'll we'll get to our picks here in a bit. We're going to kind of go through all of them and see who would which one of us is the Oscar aficionado, but I will just say a disclaimer right up front. I lost money on the Oscars. What? Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was not very exciting. I, there were some pretty wild hats that dropped there at the end. And, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I famously, I don't know if our, our, our sound tech is there, but, if he can bring up the audio of me making the case for Green Book and then uh, just <laughs> just losing my mind uh, in the moment, so yeah. but we'll get to that here. So we're just we're just here to kind of recap it and see how we did and uh, what surprised us, what uh, didn't surprise us, what was uh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, see who see who's better at picking this shit. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Right? See who's better at. Bootsy is better at predicting the weird decisions the Oscars makes every year. Correct. Um, Correct. So let yes. me just see. Well, let's just start it off with. I'll just go to the bottom of my list here. So, best sound mixing. The winner was Bohemian Rhapsody. So. Did either one of us have Bohemian Rhapsody for sound mixing? Okay. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. So we're starting off hot here. Uh, sound mixing. Uh, Luke, you had First Man. Yeah. Which uh, doesn't make any sense to me. There was. Uh, it was just sounds of spaceships and stuff. Come yeah, on, man. but it was mixed together. And I had a star is born, and sorry, there was some noise in the background there. I don't know if you heard it there, but yeah. Uh, so neither of us got that one, and uh, yeah, we lost out to Freddie Mercury. We should have. Damn Should have known. Should have known. So well, zero zero. This is zero, exciting zero. so far. Hot start. Just, just like just like the Super Bowl, it's gonna be a defensive <laughs> struggle. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So I, I did go through a couple of these picks. We did uh, we did correctly predict a few categories. So this yeah. is not going to be so it's not going to be that boring. We're going to put some points on the board here pretty quick, and yeah. I think that's going to happen right now. So for best documentary feature, the winner was Free Solo, which I'm pretty sure we both picked. Yep, we both had Free Solo there. Okay, so there was no real. In my opinion, no real 
drama slash surprise there. It was pretty <clears> cool <throat> to see my guy Jimmy Chin jump on stage there. So mm. I liked all of this. Yeah. And it was kind of awesome to see that, uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> the guy who actually did it is still with his girlfriend. So that's cool. Yeah. We had a, a quite the interesting relationship. Go out and mm. see Free Solo. Okay. Great film. Are you talking to me or the you know, just again I, I know you <laughs> you whether you say it on 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 the pot or not <laughs> oh yeah oh, yeah oh I'm you talked me watch, into it i'm gonna go watch a man from <laughs> go uncle watch it right now i'm gonna watch it man. right after the pod yeah yeah i'm not falling for that shit again yep all right so <laughs> next one i'm pretty sure we both had this one too Best achievement in makeup and hairstyling. Vice was the winner for that. Uh, yes, that was unanimous as well. Okay. Uh, again, no real, no real controversies here. Yeah. It's Christian Bale. It was, that was one of the easier ones. Yeah, it was basically the. Again, I think we said it on the pod last time, but the, yeah. the second that the Christian Bale stills dropped on the internet this 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 category was decided yep. in my mind, so. yep i agree so on to the next one i don't i kind of have a feeling that we got this one wrong but this is best costume design and black panther actually won for that i have a feeling that we picked the favorite for yep. that okay this is where uh i was wrong on a lot of black panther uh, categories because it kind of it it kind of cleaned up some some of the more periphery categories here. I thought this was just a a shoe in for the favorite, and so yeah, I do too. So did the presenters. You had uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that dress was, the <laughs> rabbit dress. Oh my the, god! Yeah, what was I thought, that? I felt like it was. I felt like it was trolling <laughs> and not have the favorite win there. I, so. <laughs> I don't think we yeah. were the only ones that didn't think it that, right. that was gonna win there. So it for yeah, sure was, was the Black clear Panther. favorite. But uh, once again, we both right. failed. Still two two here. So the next one, I feel like we both had this one as well. Best cinematography, Roma won that. Roma, yep. Okay. Both of us had this as well. Yeah, that was an easy one too. It was like of all these. Get, of all these films, there was only one that I would pick for best cinematography. You know, it was, it was yeah. a pretty clear choice. Yeah, so this is gonna uh, obviously anyone that's listening to this probably knows the results at least uh, to a fair bit of knowledge here. It's gonna be pretty shocking to see what what Roma did in the major categories and then to have it not win best picture. But yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, best cinematography, <laughs> that was kind of the first. Uh, the first big one there, so yeah. pretty cool. So the next one we have here was a little bit... I have no idea what I picked for this, but this was Best Production Design, and Black Panther also won that. <clears throat> okay, and Production Design, yes. This is where we both were on the favorite once again, and Damn. Black Panther. Black Panther Surprising. was, but... This is cool. I, uh, the lady that went up there for uh, production design, she's yeah. pretty awesome. And, yeah, I agree. Uh, it was like, oh, wow, you know, that's... Just watching some of the short clips from Black Panther, I was like, oh, God, damn it. Like, what was that? Especially costume design. I think I was just really focused in on the fact that it was kind of a weird uh, CGI Black Panther right. costume Same. like the main character Same. had, but then you kind of look back at all the extras and the yeah. other tribal members. It's like, ah, oh, man, Wakanda was, yeah, that was, that was the shit. But I kind of had, that was the only, I think that was the only comic book movie I saw this year. So, hmm. yeah, uh, I kind of had the same thought. It was tough to not picture just a terrible CGI suit just appearing over top of him. And it, but that did kind of cloud the waters there. But, oh, well, you know, production design, I don't know. It. I think it was fine. I think it's a fine winner. It's, again, it was like a lot of CGI. The one thing that really stood out to me in Black Panther, which is weird, is like all those waterfall fight scenes, I thought those looked awful. 
Like, I thought that was some of the most, mm. like, clearly okay. blue screen shit I've ever seen. Like, right. I was like, wow, this looks bad. Like, can't you, like, build a set that, you know, that would look way better than this and have, like, natural lighting and stuff on it? Like, I mean, it, I was like, wow, I hate this. Right. Like, I, it really bugged me. So I, I was kind of surprised by the pick, but, uh, you know, it's I th- I think it's probably good that that it cleaned up some of these. So yeah, and I was uh, I was thoroughly wrong about my prediction that if it looks like Barry Lyndon, it wins production yeah. design, and uh, that proved out to be not yeah. true. So thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank Oscars you Academy. For that. Uh, yeah. Well, this this next one I think we both clearly had, and this was another clear favorite. Best original song was obviously Shallow yep. from A Star yep. Is Born. I really, especially after seeing the When a Cowboy Trades His Spurs for Wings <laughs> performance, yeah. I thought it would be just the ultimate troll job to pick that <laughs> to pick right, after, right after Lady Gaga and yeah. Bradley Cooper leave the stage. Just, just really, just... Just sink that dagger in, just yeah. so deep. You know, I just rewatched A Star Is Born this weekend because it was in the cheap seats. So I was like, "Oh, it's, I'm gonna go see that," and I really liked it again. Like mm. some of the luster, it maybe started to come off a bit with with months of not having seen it. But then rewatching, I was like, "Damn, that's a really good movie." Right. Again, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, between between that film and the favorite, it was like. I'm, I'm guessing most most viewers were like, "Wow, I, I don't think I've seen that film. Like, what what is mm. this? Yeah, what is this Bradley Cooper vehicle? Out of, out <laughs> yeah, <of> nowhere. <laughs> right. So, yeah. no one saw. Again, it. Yeah. that's that's great that you're plugging uh, Star Is Born because this might this this might be what it needs to really just put it over the top. Yeah, I just right? really I appreciate that you don't have any cynicism towards me no and you just shoot me straight you know it's one of my favorite (laughs) things about what we do so just moving right along here uh best original score was black panther i have no idea what i picked for this wow okay so we were we were both on black panther here really okay cool yep yep because i just have score and then black panther for uh sweet both of us well, good job. So, uh, I swear to God, if we tie here, I'm gonna <laughs> we're gonna have to like pick some category that doesn't exist, <laughs> and I'll decide. Who yeah, you'll decide. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Perfect. So the next so, one was best documentary short. Period. End of sentence. I have no idea what I picked. Okay. And I am looking documentary short. Was this this was different than live action short? Right. right? Yep. yep. Okay. I'm not sure we went over that one. Because <laughs> I don't have it here. Unless okay. I was just kind of uh, not really paying attention, which, again, which, you know, will just surprise me, but. <laughs> just kind of So we're going to chalk that one up as an L. Yeah. Uh, we'll just. Saw. Just I swear we talked here. about it, but maybe that was live short. Maybe. Maybe I just combined those two. Yeah. Uh, it could I don't be. know. So if it comes down to it, I'm pretty sure I picked a period end of sentence. Right, so. yeah, that sounds kind Let's of familiar just, to me too. But Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, I, I don't think you had that one. No? I thought for sure, yeah. but... I don't think so, but again... <laughs> you know, that'll be our tiebreaker. Uh, if, uh, if we tie, then you win because you picked period end of sentence. How about that? Yeah. Agreed. Okay. And then I can be like the the Patriots here. You can complain all awesome <laughs> about how the balls were deflated. Yeah. And, uh, clearly. So. Yeah. So. Great. Then best live action short, like you said, the winner was okay. Skin. Ah. Okay. All right. So you got this one. Boom. You taking the lead, man. Woo! Uh, I went with Mother here, and uh, with so... no exclamation point. Yeah. Luke takes the lead here. It is yeah. five to four. 
by my All right, I'm pretty sure it's about to get tied up on this next one, though. So, animated short was Bow, and I'm pretty sure I pick Weekends. Okay, yep, and I had Bow. Bow so was the... The that was Pixar. The, uh, the Pixar joint. Yep. Yep. So you were right about that. that. So we tied so, that right back up. So our next one is film editing, which okay. was Bohemian Rhapsody, surprisingly. Oh. So both and, of us went with Vice here. I think it's more or less because we just. We like that Adam McHale style of yeah. film editing, and uh, yeah, and it was weird because was like I don't, I mean, I Vice he, just had the of us saw Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody, Rhapsody, so, so we didn't really have a good idea of the film editing. I just Vice would just, the film editing was just so apparent, you know, in it and played such a big role that I thought that would overtake it. And like we said, we haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody, so I don't know, but. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So next one was visual effects, and the winner was First Man. Damn, you had First Man, yes. and I went with I went with uh, Thanos, the yeah. the most visual effects. Mm, and mm, mm. wow, I stand corrected. I thought that was a shoe in. And uh, I think so did Vegas. So, uh, <laughs> shoot, I wish I had the odds in front of me. Yeah. Here, but I remember you saying that that was a that was going to be a nice little payoff for you there. So. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks. You're welcome. I thought we were friends. So. <laughs> well, I just kind of felt like the Academy likes those kind of astronaut war movies for some of those technical ones, and. I don't know, I just kind of had a feeling about it. But I also had a feeling about it for sound mixing, and it didn't win that, so, well, you know. Okay, so moving right along, speaking of sound mixing, this is its much maligned cousin, sound editing, also winning Bohemian Rhapsody, which I'm pretty sure we had a quiet place. Did we pick that? Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. Whatever. So this this uh this snubbed a quiet place, right? Yep. I think this is the only nomination for it. I mm-hmm. remember thinking that this would be a nice spot for it, just being as it was the only nomination and being that it was such a unique film, but once again it's motherfucking Freddie Mercury yeah. and Yeah, why not? What are you gonna do? He's just yeah. a he's a he's a typhoon of, of talent and intrigue and yep, apparently sound editing so <laughs> that's the first thing you. i think of every time i think of freddie mercury is man what great sound editing agreed agreed so so i'm pretty again, sure so six to five so six far five. and i think towards the top we do get a little disparity here so i'm hoping yeah that we don't tie yeah, um, so too, but we'll but see. But I'm also hoping that uh, I win, too. So. Right. <laughs> so either one of those would be great. Either one. Either um, one. So next one is Best Animated Feature. I think we both got this one right. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yep. Yeah. This so was, I uh, almost picked Incredibles 2, this was an but easy then I switched one. it. Uh, I wish you would have. <laughs> And this was a big Vegas favorite. I remember it was like minus fifteen hundred. Yeah. Uh, one of those things where, yeah, it, it, it must have gotten out that they're. Uh, God, it looked like they had to print off one hundred and fifty Oscars for this one. There was <laughs> yeah, stage, big but... time. Yeah, I love that that no one. Cage. No Nick yeah, Cage. Yeah, that's what I there said. Was Nick Cage. I know. Hashtag where was Nick Cage? Oscars twenty nineteen. Please have get been him great up here. Just to send Nick Cage up there. Yeah, to collect all those Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> He's like holding just fifteen of them. Uh, uh, thank Dad. you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> okay. So then, this yeah. is another one that I'm pretty sure we both got. Best foreign language film, Roma. Yep. Okay. And this one was. Uh, this was another. Pretty unanimous, so, so far we have Best Foreign Language, Best Cinematography, and uh, normally that's pretty good. Uh, you got to feel 
pretty good about yourself going into the main event there, but hey. Hey, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> so, so, then the next one, best adapted screenplay, was Black Klansman. Yes, and we were both unanimous on this as well. Okay, So, cool. good job to us. Good job, us. Uh, always interesting to see Spike Lee jump up on stage, obviously. Yeah. Always Never interesting really to see with a, <laughs> with, a, with a microphone in his hand. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that was fun. It was good. Um, yeah, I wish they. I wish Black Klansman would have won a couple more, honestly. But, but I'm glad they won that one. So then, this is a good category because it's notoriously very good films that win screenplay. Yeah, that really uh, stand the test of time. If you go, if you go back in history, there's just it's, yeah. Like I said, like the best adapted screenplay and and the best original screenplay, a lot of times end up being movies that like really should have won Best Picture but didn't. Um, like I'm pretty sure Citizen Kane won Best Original Screenplay, but didn't win Best Picture in 1942. It came out in 41, but it would have been the 1942 Oscars. So anyway, uh, moving right along. Um, original screenplay, the winner was Green Book. Mm. Did either one Negative of us have for both it? of us. Okay. So, Luke, you had Roma, and I had The Favorite. Okay. And neither of us were correct there. Green Book, this was the... Besides the individual awards, was did it jump on for anything else here? I don't think it did. Did it? Not for any of the other technical or anything else. No, I think the rest right. of them are, yeah. Yep. So yeah, um, not much to say there. Just nope. uh, yep, green book. And uh, we'll just keep on moving. So, uh, best supporting actress was Regina King. If Beale Street could talk, did either one of us pick her? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I didn't we, think so. We went with. God. We split so the favor. We, went with the, we, we split our vote with the favorite girls. <laughs> uh, we're so, Emma Stone uh, we're so stupid. And we called it. That was going to happen, too. We this knew they were going to split the vote. Thing too, uh, yeah. No. I, yeah. It, <laughs> it feels bad because I, then, then I also missed on Best Actress and that. Uh, yeah. I don't, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll we'll get say, to that. I'll we'll get to that. But I'm pretty sure you here, did but... say like Barry Jenkins has a way of uh, of winning people Oscars, and it's we really crazy. should have we really should have took that into consideration for for this. Yeah. But yeah. but you know we all make mistakes. So moving right along, I'm pretty sure we both had this one: it's Best Supporting Actor, Mahershala Ali, Green Book. <laughs> so this. <laughs> You don't remember? You don't remember my pick here? No. This was this was, uh, this was coming off the top row. Sam Elliott plays. <laughs> you did pick him. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah. So it, if if I lose off of my Sam Elliott pick, I, <laughs> I I have no qualms. Yeah. No qualms whatsoever. Okay. So you are up by two now. So I I, I may need a. A historic comeback here. Yeah. I don't know that I have the categories to do it, but but we'll but see. So we're at ten to eight right now. Okay, so best actress was Olivia Coleman in The Favorite. Yep, and this we were both on Glenn Close here. Yeah, uh, I had reservations. I I like. Perhaps the rest of the world, I like. I didn't see the wife. I don't know. Did you see the no, wife? No, no. I didn't even. I, I hadn't even heard of it. Okay. Yeah. I. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't either. Okay. Good. <laughs> but <laughs> I just looked at the odds and I was like, my God! Like, it, it was like minus seven hundred or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But big, it was dumb big, big because favorite. this was this was this should have been Tony Collette's. It should have been. Sure. Right. You know. And yeah, we we went into that and what we kind of thought about that. Yeah, and, yeah we did. You know, it it is what it is, but and then I'm going to Olivia Coleman, who I didn't, I didn't think she was better than Rachel Weisz, and you could make the case that she was better than Emma Stone. 
but I always thought it was weird that she got the nod for being the the lead lead actress in yeah. this. Like maybe is that just a billing thing? I don't it really could, understand it. I, I don't know because if it was, I would think that Emma Stone would have the most clout out of all three of them. Sure, but she's clear. I mean, she you didn't see the favorite, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, she's 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 certainly. Uh, the third out She's of three. She's certainly a supporting actor of okay. the three. I, I would have said that Rachel Weisz is the more okay. titular character in the story. And you'd think she would have more. And, I'm pretty sure she has more credits than Olivia uh, Coleman. But. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just thought. But maybe it comes down to like screen time or the amount of lines or, uh, you know, whatever. But. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure how that works. That's kind of an interesting thing to maybe look into, but it, yeah. if anything, the kind of takeaways from the night as far as like what we thought coming in and what actually happened, we really got the favorite wrong. Yeah, we did. Because <laughs> we picked it for a bunch of other categories, and then we screwed up uh, yeah, basically for the debacle of, of the... Yeah, the best we really and best actress. we really overestimated the Academy's love for period piece movies. <sighs> yeah, but. so uh, we messed it here, but hey, I hey. don't have any problem with this. Because, no, and you uh, know Olivia Coleman gave my favorite speech of the night. Like I was legitimately super happy for her. I was like, oh yeah, like you know you see Olivia Coleman around, you see her in a few movies, and. She seems like just, you know, she's usually in comedies, and I don't know, it was just like, man, Olivia Coleman just seems, like, super grateful, and she honestly seemed like she did not expect to win, and uh, just seems like a, I, I loved it. I was like, all right, now I just love sure. Olivia Coleman, you know? Yeah, so, so uh, and I'll also point out that even though I didn't see The Wife, I had seen Fatal Attraction. I see. And... And by damn, I, I can't imagine that Glenn Close is is, is better yeah. in The Wife than she is in Fatal Attraction. So I, I'm just gonna we'll I'm see. gonna stand by my point there okay. as being correct, and I and I'm guessing that the Academy thought the same thing. They're like, yeah, no, we just can't. Yeah, they're like, this isn't a lifetime achievement award, you know, just for this I one agree. performance. I agree. So this next one, I do not remember what I picked, and I do not remember what you picked. So it's gonna be interesting. Best actor. Uh, Rami Malek, Bohemian Rhapsody. I've always said Rami, but then at the awards show, they all said it. They all said Rami, so I was like, "Oh, maybe he goes by Rami." But right, and maybe he changed it like three hours right. before the awards yeah. show, like Vizante uh, Shanko. Again, uh, he's relatively new to uh, leading mm-hmm. in a feature-length film. This being his first one, uh, we both picked this. Did we? Uh, okay. I wasn't terribly surprised. Uh, again, I think we kind of went into it, just the, the oddity of, uh, this situation, but yeah, it, it's, it's Rami Malek. It's, is it Rami Malek or is it a vote for Freddie Mercury? I, right. I'm not really sure. Yeah. But. Yep. So the next one, I don't know. I don't remember this one either, but I have a feeling we both picked uh, this, but best director, Alfonso Cuaron, Roma. Yep. Okay. Both had Roma here, yeah. and uh, so so yeah, that's a the <laughs> the the triple threat of best director, <laughs> yeah, best cinematography, best foreign film, but yeah. but <laughs> uh, dot dot dot, um, yeah. I mean, this was clear, and it was it was interesting. They brought up like, is it four of the last five or five of the last six people to win? Best director are um, for Mexico, Mexican uh, men. Yeah, yeah. I suppose yeah, because uh, Del Toro. Yeah, in, it was in Uratu. Yeah, it was. Uh, Crone. Yeah. Crone was for Gravity too. Birdman? Gra- oh, yeah, Gravity, Gravity. Alejandro yep. Iñárritu was for yep. Birdman. Yeah, it yep. was Alfonso Cuarón, Guillermo Del Toro. Uh, and then before that was Alejandro Iñárritu, and then yeah. yeah, so very cool, good job, Alfonso. Yeah, but not good enough. But not good yeah. enough to beat out <laughs> the movie that won Best Picture, the big deal, the big Kahuna, the big prize, Green Book. 
which Green Book. I'm pretty sure I picked A Star Is Born, and I feel yep. like you picked Green Book. I did. I did have Green Book, uh, but as I alluded to earlier, I I lost my mind and picked Roma in real life. You uh, idiot. In real, uh, real money. Cajones. Yeah. And I lost. Yeah. <laughs> so, cheers, cheers to myself. <laughs> I, I just sat there, I kept looking at it, I kept looking at it, I kept, God, uh, it's just going to be, I, it's one of those things where you, you, you say stuff to be interesting and then you get down to it. You know, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to mess around. You just can't I follow wanna, through. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to stay safe here. Yeah. I want to pick a winner and yeah. messed up. You messed up. I messed up. That was I, your uh, big shot and you fucking blew it. Yeah. So I, I threw the ball on the goal line instead of giving the ball yeah. to Marshawn Lynch, man. Yeah. So, I, I just, uh, yeah, so that, that puts us, that's our, that was the last category, right? Yep. So, uh, not including my period end of sentence, uh, winner, <laughs> which I know that I picked correctly. But it's uh, not on the ballot. You are, you are up by one point. Uh, thank you, Sam Elliott. Ooh. Thank you, Academy. <laughs> Uh, 10 to 9 with a big asterisk next to it because we all know that we can go back to the tape and we can actually yeah, yeah we, we don't need to though down, so. I think we all know uh, who the real winner is so uh, with all all of those caveats uh, I don't know win behind your back I, I guess you yeah. could, I guess you could say hey. that uh, you won but yeah. I'll we take all, it we all know that's Oh, that's just fake news I'll take, propaganda. I'll just take and a win any way I can get it. The loyal listeners, the loyal listeners, they know goddamn well who won. Yeah. And scoreboard. I'll just say scoreboard. You know, that's it. Yeah. So scoreboard. Let's see here. Uh, how many cat? Twenty eight categories total. Twenty. What? Uh, let's how see. How many? How many categories are there total? Let's see. Trying we to have think how we, what's our percentage here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Great podcasting. 13, 14, <laughs> 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24. 24, yeah. So, so uh, 10 out of 24. <laughs> nice, nice work. So, good nice job, Nice work, guys. uh... Yeah, there there it is. Yeah, it's only about a forty, little under forty two percent. To right. It, so. So. There it is. So we uh, did it. Any thoughts? Anything that um, took you guys? You know, I like. Kind of touched on some of it here, but I I actually really liked that they didn't have a host. It kept the the show a lot shorter, and I thought it I thought it flowed very smoothly, and it was kind of nice to not have a host. To be honest, like. Instead of the big long monologue right away, where it's like could be funny or could be just kind of meh. Usually it's pretty meh. They just started with a with a musical number. They got that out of the way, and then they just kind of went into the awards. And honestly, I thought it's I thought it flowed super smoothly, and it wasn't any. It wasn't like okay, what's our host gonna say next? What jokes are they gonna make? Is this gonna work? You know, what kind of big gimmicky thing are they gonna do? It just it just flowed really smoothly. And I really liked it. I swear it cut like a half hour off the runtime, at least, if not like 45 minutes. So, Well, you will be interested to find out that it was actually over three, in, three hours and 15 minutes. What? Uh, because I bet the over, and that was one of my few wins on the night. It was... Uh, so, so that was a long that was a long one? I mean, it was so the whole deal with the Academy wanting to cut uh those four categories was to get it in that three hour window block uh mm. for ABC. And so yeah, once they once they got the backlash from that and they decided that no, we have to put these back on, uh I remember there was I was a story I was reading from some Academy Yahoo saying it's definitely going to be over three hours now, and so I kind of took that to heart and hmm. and I okay 
uh, I guess I won there, but yeah. yeah. Well, so I mean, I still thought it flowed smoother and was more enjoyable to it watch. It seemed a little bit, yeah. Like I, I like the, uh, yeah. You, you you have multiple people up there presenting multiple categories. That's yeah. fun too. Yeah. You just you you boom boom boom. You have a couple. You have a couple performances, but not too many. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah, I thought it was cut so, and dry nice. Like, like I thought Jimmy Kimmel did a really good job the last two years. Especially, like, it sucks that it's going to he's gonna be remembered for for when uh, when Warren Beatty fucked up saying La La Land won and not Moonlight. Um, you know, like, it sucks that he's going to be remembered for that. Because that year I thought he did great. Like, I was like, this might be the best hosting job I've seen. I think both of the Jimmy years were really good. Yeah, and, I was uh, like, he's really good at it, you know, but... It's a tough job. It's really like a lose-lose job because mm-hmm. there's, especially in the age of social media, most pretty much everyone's there with a second screen and live tweeting and yeah. uh, basically just looking for things to be funny and clever about when they are watching interactively, but hey. Yeah. Like, even, like, a bunch of the jokes stand out to me, like, when he had the running bit of, like, showing people watching movies in an empty, like, theater and just saying, oh, this is the film that really, like, meant a lot to me and really inspired me, and they, like, kept showing different people, and then eventually it showed him, Jimmy Kimmel, watching We Bought a Zoo and just being like, wow, you know, sometimes you look at this and think, wow, some people just make really shitty movies <laughs> just to make fun of Matt Damon. <laughs> was so funny. And then and then Matt Damon comes on to present, and it's, like, with Ben Affleck, and they say, now coming to the stage, Ben Affleck and guest. And it was just so funny. And then, like, he brought in the Star Tours bus, the, an actual Star Tours bus to come in. And, like, man, it just, though that was... I loved it. I was like, that's so good. And, um, you know, was it last year? He said the, the big prize was going to be for the, the, the winner with the shortest speech won a jet ski, you know, like, I don't know. It just, a lot of stuff he did really was really funny and really worked well for me. Um, but more often than not, the hosting sucks. Hosting the Oscars sucks. And it's not, like you said, typically it's a lose lose, and most of the time it's just it's a tough gig, and you just can't really pull it off. So, right. if I would choose Until, between having a good Jimmy Kimmel hosting and not having a host, I think I might just rather not have a host. I don't know. Right. I mean, you're you're wrong because uh, of course, like I said, what's new? Uh, last week, The Rock is hosting next year, and it's gonna yeah, be that's it's def that's definitely gonna happen. It's going to be like the Pulp Fiction adrenaline shot in your chest. You're not going to... Well... There are going to be so many explosions on screen that you're, you're going to lose your fucking mind, and I can't wait a minute. Yeah. So... Well, at least we have yeah, it on record. No. Uh, that was uh, that was fun. Yeah. Overall, uh, I really... I enjoyed... I enjoyed 2019. Uh or uh, 18, sorry, I'm kind of already moved on, but uh, <laughs> 18 as far as movies go, uh, there's still a few that I need to need to get after, Yeah. Uh, just to clear up those blind spots, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast and yep. how much stuff comes out, Right. but yeah, once again, looking forward to uh, 2019, and uh, yeah, so uh, we have a new... Uh, segment that we're going to kind of do especially with these kind of lean months leading into summer films uh, where yeah you want to go ahead and explain what we're going to be kind of yeah. doing here once a month at least right so we kind of talked about w- there's certain s- uh, categories certain things we want to do that that as you know one of the reasons the loyal listeners tune in every week is just to hear our <laughs> Our huge amount of preparation we put into each one of these episodes yeah. and definitely not right yeah. off the cuff, you know, but what we kind of yeah. wanted to do were a couple things that would require, um, you know, a lot more prep work and that kind of thing. But we were kind of talking about how, um, there's a lot of directors out there and, and not just directors, but actors and whatever that like, you know of, but you haven't really seen all of the films in their filmography. And it'd be kind of cool to just pick, a director, actor, and just kind of go through 
um, some movies that we've missed and just kind of talk about their career um, in general. And so we decided that we're going to start with, we're going to start this next week, we're going to be doing David Fincher. David so, Fincher. Coming so at you. It's coming at you. He's one we're of our... We're doing a Fincher deep dive. That's right. We're going Get into your popcorn the mind, ready. The twisted mind. Yep. And, and let me tell you, I, I'm going to, I will, I'm, I'm going to say this right here. Okay. Say this right now. Look out. Hot take. I'm going to watch... I'm gonna watch every Madonna music video, every Billy Idol music video that he's done. Yeah, and I just want you guys to know gonna, that it's just gonna be old legs. That's why I'm not gonna watch any of that shit. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch them all. Yeah, and, I know you and will. I'm gonna love it. Yep, you will. There's no doubt of you already do. It's just a like we say, it's just a formality at this point. You already love all of those music videos. <laughs> and now you just have the remedial task of just watching them, you know, at this point. But Correct. but definitely Correct. tune in so. for for that. But that'll do it for us this week. Uh check me out on Twitter at Luke Larson eighty nine, at this podcast at L Squared Podcast, on Twitter at L two Podcast on Facebook, we're on SoundCloud, we're on YouTube. And tune in next week for our David Fincher episode. Old Legs, yeah. thanks for being on. It's like you are every week. And, yes. uh, you know, we'll just kind of save. We we're kind of. I know we were talking off mic, but we'll just kind of save contract talks for later. Um, right. We just kind of want to well, go through this. And, I'm in for a nice payday here. Yeah. yeah. You know, at this point, it's like it's looking at the be. field. I know I'm going to have to overpay you, but. Yeah, you started a lot of games, so what are you doing? Anyway. I'm an, I'm an innings eater. <laughs> that's innings true. Eater. Yeah. You just Quantity chew up screen time. Yeah. Something like that. But I'm like a I'm like an afternoon uh, newsday host. Just just put me in there. Cold pizza time. Let's go. I, I can't follow that. So <laughs> Until next Damn time. Right, I can't. I'm out. The gift of gab, it is strong with me. Peace.